Hey everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we had a look at HTTP and we were able to access some data from, uh, from a RESTful service or posting data there too. And we also covered a lot of other things in this course. And obviously there are a lot of other topics which we haven't covered because Angular 2 is very complex and has a lot of things where we have only touched the basics as of now. One thing where we haven't talked about at all, but which is also a nice feature, are pipes. Pipes are a feature in Angular 2 to easily transform text or, or numbers, so output in general, um, in our templates. So that if, for example, we have a date, which might be a complete date string like um, four digit year, dash, two month, uh, two digit month, two digit day, and then the time string with milliseconds, that, that's not something you're output normally. So therefore you would have a pipe, which is kind of a, yeah, not a, a filter you could say in some way, uh, basically a transformer, which will uh, then take this long date string and transform it in a way you specify. And we'll look, have a look at those pipes in this video. So in my contact list here, um, let's say I want to have the last name of each user to be uppercase. So that it should, should be all uppercase. Now that's very easy to do in, in Angular, almost at Laravel. You should check out that video too. Uh, by, by, way, by the way, um, to do this is very easy. I'm here in my, oops, I'm here in my uh, contact list component. And here is where I output my last name. And all I do now is I just in in this in these curly braces here I add the pipe character and behind the pipe character comes the name of my pipe, and this name case it's a built-in pipe which is called upper case. Now let me save this and let's have a look at yeah what happened is basically that I entered three P's, um, but. That is not the way you spell uppercase. Boom! Now we got all our last names um, written in uppercase. So that are pipes. Have a nice day. Bye. No, obviously not. Um, that That is an example for a pipe and that is how pipes in general function. But obviously there are more complex pipes than, for example, turning the name to uppercase. So I'll, I'll leave that. But now I'll also want to, to add something in my uh, app component where I also had my, my HTTP test here. That's kind of the playing ground. It hasn't something to do directly to do with my contact app, but I want to showcase some of those pipes. So beneath my HTTP request stuff here, I'll just add a class pipes. And I will quickly add some visual styling to that class. Um, it should have like, let's say a margin top and body, 32 pixels, padding 16 pixels. Um, it should have, um, it should have a background color of a very light gray and a border one pixel solid and a darker gray. Yeah, that should, that should be fine. Um, yeah, like that. And now I'll showcase some pipes. So we got our, for example, the date pipe, right? Now, let me show what the date pipe does. Let's say in our app component here, I define a new date. Uh, let's just call it date equals new date, which will give us the date of to today. And then here I could output this date like so, right? Let's try this. Yeah, that's today. And as I said, that's not the most convenient way to read this. Now we can add the date pipe here. And now we got a much more convenient way. Now we got sev several ways of uh, configuring that date pipe. And um, now in the API preview on the official Angular 2 website, and here I filter for pipe and then I see all the built-in pipes there that currently exist. And if we have a look at the date pipe here, we see 
uh, how we can use it by adding um, an optional argument, which we always do by typing colon and then argument. And if a pipe takes several arguments, then we would separate those arguments with several colons. But date only takes one argument, which is the format. And well, we could, for example, use this format here, save this. There's another app. And now we would have, yeah, basically this output here. And we also got some built-in quick formats, so to say. We could use short to have this kind of output. Um, or let's say we want to have, um, what looks good? Yeah, let's say this one. So we could either just copy that string here or just write full date, full date. And now we got this very nice representation of today. Now, obviously, you, I'm not going to go through the full list here. Um, just yeah, look it up in the API documentation if you're looking for a certain way to format a date. But that's a really handy thing to quickly output dates in a, in a different way. Now, if we have a look at the other pipes we got here, I'm not going to go through each pipe in this video here. But uh, we would have a currency in a decimal pipe, which allows us to yeah just output decimals um, or numbers in a certain uh, format and this format will account for internationalization though the api documentation here warns us that this uses the internationalization um, interna internationalization api and is only working reliably in chrome and opera so maybe you should watch out with these but what that was would do in theory if i just add it here number pipe so uh, I'll have my, let's say, my um, number of 4.567 or 6. Um, and then I use the decimal pipe, um, at the currency pipe currently. Um, but let's use the decimal pipe here. Um, then I will just, oh, I'll just use number. That's the name of the pipe. And then the digit info, which is the format of how many... Um, integer digits one we should we display at the minimum so uh, I want always have at least one digital um, integer digit even though it might be zero dot something there should be the zero at all times then a dot and then basically the decimal places and the first uh, character here is uh, how many and this should be quotation marks by the way so the first character here is how many digits should be displayed at the least um, after the comma so, or after the dot in non-German uh, decimal notation. So in this case, I want to have, let's say, always at least two decimal places and it should also be at the maximum two. So let me save this and now we have 4.57 even though I entered 4.566. So that's how it handles this and if I entered four here well, we would have uh, all three and if I had a minimum of four um, decimal digits well then we would have the zero at the end here even though I only entered three digits here right so it should be should be very clear I think now now I think I'm now I'm doing them all now let's ask uh, at the currency pipe here and the currency pipe has a very similar way of working. So let's say we have $15.99. And again, let's go to our documentation here and pick the currency pipe. Uh, now this looks a bit complicated, but in the end it isn't. We have several arguments here, as you can see. So first let's add the pipe symbol and just type currency. Now we don't have to specify any argument. By default, it will output um, it will take US dollars and output it this way. Now we can change this by adding the first argument, our currency code. So we could specify Euro here. And this should be a string, yeah. So that's why it's not working, Euro. 
and now we had, would have euros in this notation. Now we might want to change the notation from um, output at the long way by displaying the three characters um, by just using, um, for example, true, which will output the, the euro sign or respectively, of course, the US dollar sign instead of the, the whole word, a uh, word, a uh, word, so to say. Now, digit info is the last argument we can specify, and it works the same way as it did here um, in our number pipe. We just say how should how should it be formatted, like right? So we could also say it should have four uh, decimal digits, then this would be the okay, the way it would be output. Um, now, no, I'm not going to go through all of them, at least not in this video. But let's say. Um, I think lowercase pipe isn't that interesting, but a very interesting pipe would be async pipe. That's a special pipe. All the pipes here, or most of the pipes, are um, kind of stateless pipes, i.e. I enter a value here, I apply the pipe, and then boom, it outputs the, the formatted value, right? Formatting is really all those pipes do and they don't have to keep any state for that because they get a value, they format it, they output it. Done. Now, uh, async pipe is a pipe which actually says um, wait, for, wait for a value. So don't just take the value, transform it and output it and never look at it again. No, instead we will have like, for example, an, an API call going off and the request or the response will take some seconds to come back. So um, let me just show you what this is. Um, I'll add a stateful full pipe here. And the way this will work is just the following. I, I have a property in my app component here, let's say random data. And what this property is, is it, it is the result of a promise. Or, or a new promise. No, not promise. Promise. Thank you. And in here, we're passing the resolve and the reject parameters to our fat arrow function. And in there, what I will do is I'll set a timeout to like simulate a delayed response, um, where I will basically just resolve my my request and return some random data. So just string here, really. And I will take like, so, so let's say one second for this. So now this variable will only be set after one second because that's the time it will take our promise to resolve and return the string here. Now, if I set random data, if I try to output this here, what we see, it's an object. It's not the actual string. It's just this promise object, right? Now let me add a magic word, a magic pipe here, the async pipe. Aha, did you see that? Just reload. Nothing, and now we got it. So the async pipe tells our, uh, our template, so to say, it tells Angular 2, don't output it yet. It will come back with some data and wait until the data is there and then re-update the view and then output it. That is what the async pipe does and therefore it's very powerful if you want to display certain data which you know it is available from the start but it might take some time until it is there. Then you just add the async pipe and you're able to wait for that response to, to return and to be there. That is how you use pipes. Now, you can also write custom pipes and there are more pipes than the ones I showed you. But we need to have some uh, features for future videos, I guess. And uh, I don't want to go into that much of detail right now. I just wanted to show you what pipes are and how to use pipes to yeah, mainly transform or reformat data. And I hope that worked and stay tuned for the next videos. Bye.